Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John Cole and I get to speak with Manny Pacheco about lots of things, but mostly things that we we never knew about Hollywood that he hasn't forgotten. <laughs> that you haven't forgotten? You do remember it all. Manny, I am a big fan of uh, uh, acting and actors, and I know one of the things that I'm uh, always taken by is the fact that actors need to act. They need to perform. They need to get paid. And if you can't get the jobs in this medium, you go to that medium, right? And so when television came in, of course, that was a boon for a lot of actors and a lot of unknowns. But before that, actors were happy to do radio. Mm. Movie actors, film actors, they were more than happy. In fact, I know for a fact that some, particularly comedians, had been very successful in vaudeville stage, and they made their medium, they made their way to radio, which I believe then got them the attention that they got film, feature films. Oh, I, yeah, I, I'm not totally buying what you're selling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number one, uh, actors were not happy to go to television, uh, and so they, they didn't. Uh, the, the, a whole new breed of actors emerged because uh, the, the established entrenched actors did not, and the movie studio moguls did not want film stars on television. As far as radio goes, and that was a different story. Uh, you're right, uh, many actors came from the stage, maybe vaudeville to film. They didn't come from radio. They would go from film to radio. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah, radio at the time that when it emerged in the late 20s and the mid 30s and prior to, you know, episodic shows, uh, radio was seen as a way to dispense information, uh, news, sure. that kind of thing. Um, uh, FDR's uh, uh, fireside chats, those, that's what radio was primarily uh, was about until uh, the, the studios came up with the idea of merging with radio to take some of their programming and placing it onto the radio. So it went in that direction. It, it never went from radio to, um, to to film. It went only from film to radio. And very established actors eventually ended up uh, on uh, radio and, and really created personas that were very, very popular, but forgotten because um, we don't have those radio programs uh, anymore. Right. And so, um, I grew up listening to KNX, um, the station I work at, when they used to play radio dramas at 9 p.m. and 2 a.m. in the morning on a nightly basis, seven nights a week. And I spent 20, 25 years listening to those radio dramas each night or at least a couple of nights a week. And I was just so enamored with the idea of Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers yeah. or um, <laughs> Fox 13 with Alan Ladd or uh, um, Johnny Dollar with Frank Lovejoy. I mean, these were these were actors, in some cases were big stars like Joel and, and, and Alan Ladd, Joel McCray and Alan Ladd, but Frank Lovejoy was, was a character actor who got to star in radio. William Bendix got to star in radio with The Life of Riley. So, I mean, these were actors who were very well established and then got to do some episodic programs that uh, were were very, very popular. And in some cases, radio would take an abbreviated version of a very popular film. So you might get something like Random Harvest, which was a 90 minute film, and they turn it into a 60 minute radio program. It's a Wonderful Life was done that way as well. So there was a number of, of, of movie productions that became radio, shortened or abbreviated radio productions, but in many cases, the star of the movies would do would also star in the radio program of that production as well. Yeah, but also so now, uh, many of the many of these uh, uh, and you you were talking primarily about actors. Uh, I guess there were a number of uh, women as well who were on there. Um, eventually, became the basis of early television, where uh, they uh, adapted these programs yeah. for TV series. Uh, and so we know uh, William Bendix. Uh, yeah. I remember things like uh, maybe I have the name slightly wrong. A lot of detective shows, The Green Hornet, 
uh, all the uh, uh, Buck Rogers kind of movie movies, those early ones. But can you talk about a few of the, the people who had a face for radio but not TV and the movies well, that did that didn't make the transition, even though they may have been wildly popular on the radio? You uh, well before I get to those faces because that's a great question. Lucille Ball went from My Favorite Husband to I Love Lucy, which is basically mm -hmm. the which is the same premise. And and Lucy, who really couldn't fi they couldn't figure out what to do with Lucy, and but she really excelled in radio and then was even better on television. Mm -hmm. So I mean, yeah, I mean she was really able to star and really show her comedic chops, and she made that transition from radio to television. But there were several actors who did indeed all of a sudden find success in radio and couldn't find that same success in film or television for various reasons. And the most famous of those names is William Conrad. You might remember him in Canon. Remember the show? Sure. Yeah. He was this portly, portly guy yeah. who basically cut his teeth playing bad guys in film noirs because he always had that menacing look. Yeah. Well, he got the, I mean, he got the plum choice on radio of, of all shows. He got to play Matt Dillon, uh, Marshall Matt Dillon in Gunsmoke. I mean, he was the really? radio smoke, yes. Wow. But when they brought it to television, he looked nothing like what they, people would right. imagine Matt Dillon would look like. <laughs> and but he so, did have the voice. He had the, he had the best voice. It was yeah. the perfect voice. But then they had, so, so what did they do? What did the television moguls do? They offered the role to John Wayne. Oh, no kidding. Mm. And John Wayne said, thank you, but no thank you, because he, again, he was one of those folks that did not want to make that transition from film to television. But he did recommend his buddy, Jimmy Arness, James Arness, and oh. the rest is history. James Arness got to play Matt Dillon for 20 years and beyond. Yeah. So, I mean, poor William Conrad, except luckily they found a place for William Conrad in the 1970s with a TV show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I mean, he, that's a great, great example of somebody who really, unfortunately, didn't have a face for television. He had a what they call a face for radio. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, All right. Well, I, I stand semi corrected. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to agree with you 100 percent. Well, that's okay. You never do. Hop along, hop along. Cassidy was on radio. I mean, you got Brace Beamer was the Lone Ranger, but yeah. he wasn't the Lone Ranger on television. I mean, you see what I'm saying? So sure. there, are, there are definitely voices that were just perfect for radio. That well, never... you, also, you also have people like Jack Benny. You had uh, Abbott and Costello. I mean, it, the list goes on and on and on. Herds and Allen. Mm. George and Gracie Allen. Uh, some would say that Jack Benny was better on radio than he was on television, and that Burns and Allen were better on television than they were on radio. So I mean, you know, they, but they were, but they were all very good. And and I never understood the whole Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy on radio. I mean, a ventriloquist act needs to be seen, <laughs> and what it was doing on radio is beyond me. But it was very, very popular in, in a show called The Chase and Sanborn Hour. So, I mean, yes, you're right. There were a lot of comedians who also cut their teeth uh, in, in radio as well. And they made the transition to television, or maybe they made it into movies later. But, I mean, we're talking when radio started going away. And, and radio es essentially went away because the, um, the production companies felt it was much more to their advantage to create these episodic shows on television. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Many of I will say many of the ideas on tele early television came from radio. I mean that oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like you said, like you said, Art, the life of Riley is a great example. Yeah. I mean, that was a big radio show. That was a big television show. William Bendix was a star, uh, and and yet, yet on in film, you know, he would be the he'd be the supporting player. Always a great supporting player. Uh, and he always he never lacked for work. William Bendix always worked, and he mm. and he was a fine actor too. I mean, he really was. I mean, don't let that 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 Brooklyn persona fool you. That guy could act, and uh, but but he was he really excelled with radio. And who knew that he could also do television just as well? So.
He, he definitely lived the life of Riley, for sure. <laughs> for more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.